My metal and I'm talking to. Hi, I'm Heidi. Hey, I'm Carla. Yeah, we're in Butcher Baby. There you go. Cool, <laughs> definitely. Um, I guess the first question is from the start of the pandemic till now. How like you guys have got your hands into a lot of stuff, but how trying was it? How hard was it to adapt? Because you're not, you don't know the future of what you're going to be on tour or what, what's going to happen. We still don't really know the future. Uh, we're taking it day by day, and. Um, I think when everything first happened, um, you know, we obviously we thought it was just going to be a couple of months and so did the rest of the industry. In fact, we had rescheduled dates like in July of 2020, right. clearly none of those happened. Um, but as musicians, we do wake up in a new city almost every day. So part of what we do is adapting. And so, uh, when it came down to, uh, learning how to navigate our careers in the pandemic, it, it was kind of a fast shift and realized that content is king and, um, you know, Twitch and talking to fans in a different way became kind of the go-to. Um, a lot of the industry put a hold on releasing music, including ourselves. We waited about six months to release a song that we were planning on in April that year. Um, but all in all, I think for both of us, and I, I can probably successfully say this for most of the band, is we're actually kind of grateful that we had that time to kind of um, rejuvenate. I, I guess it was a break. We didn't know we needed it. We got it. Yeah. <laughs> but we're glad to be back. I mean, we, did, we didn't want a whole year and a half, by all means. But well, definitely. But we are, you know, we did get to kind of take a step back and we're really grateful for our careers. And I think that, you know, when you do something for 10 plus years, sometimes it becomes mundane. And then, you know, when it's all taken away from you, you realize, you know, I've worked my whole life for this. It's not mundane. You know, every right. day that we're able to get on stage is the best day of our lives. So we definitely learned a lot. As far as like a big band, like you guys have you, I mean, obviously this is going to change the way you guys do things, I guess for a long time as far as like adapting to what's going on yeah well as you said we really don't know what the future looks like as far as touring as far as releasing albums so we should take each day in stride and, and see what comes our way and hope for the best and hope that one day we can uh tour with you know without worrying about you know we have to cancel a week of shows somewhere along the way etc um or you know we wanted to go over to Europe at some point, but we can't because All right. the borders are closing again. So it's, it's yeah, we had a tour time. in November planned for but, Europe uh, <laughs> that got canceled yesterday. So <laughs> we just hope that again, just maybe six months from now, things will be different. Maybe three months from now, things will be different. And if not, we'll figure it out. Yeah. You have to adapt. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You did release a new single a while back. Um, how's that going? We've released uh five different singles yeah. well yeah in a year we released a, a brand new single it's killing time baby a week ago right yep. yes and it's so in bananas on the internet we're so excited it's already so cool. got over <laughs> 200,000 plays in a very very short time um and hopefully more so if you guys are out there listening play it on repeat all day long um it's such a fun song we've actually been playing it live the last week that we've been out on tour and it, i think that all of us have just it's I think it's one of the funnest songs you've ever written it's so much yeah. fun uh, it's it, it definitely brings the fun back in. You know, on this tour, we're playing our first album, which is a very serious album. And since then, we've been we've released a lot of songs that are just super fun, yeah. and it's a party, and everyone's invited. And then um, with the new song, we kind of brought it back to that. So it's a nice yeah. relief from all the serious songs we're playing on this tour to you know bring the fun. That's funny. We, I think that. We, in the beginning, we were defined by, you know, our material being very serious. And then we started writing songs like Pomona. And that's who Monsters we Ball. are as people. Monsters Ball, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to get up there and have a good time. Every night's a party. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I don't think anyone should take themselves that seriously. And 
yeah. these new songs, we definitely feel like they really speak to who we are. We were nervous about releasing this song because it's about a comic book character, Lobo. He's a heavy right. metal bounty biker dude and, you know, space alien. And, and um, it's, it's very tongue in cheek, the song. And so we were a little bit nervous about it, but it kind of just goes, the, the su success that it's had right out of the gates is kind of a, uh, you know, it kind of shows that our silly shit does do well. It does, you know, sometimes this, the more serious stuff that we pour our heart and souls into, you know, we have that niche crowd that likes us, but this silly stuff, a lot of people really gravitate towards that. I mean, I do, so. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, as far as like, as far as like, um, when do you think you're going to release a full album? Is it coming soon or you think We're it is? Fun. <laughs> We're having fun kind of doing it this way, you know, single by single. Um, we, one thing that we were really bummed about with our last full length album is there were some songs on there that we really, really put a lot of time and energy and emotions into, and it ends up being like a track eight, you know, and, right. and we don't want to write any filler tracks. We want, everything we put our stamp on to be give it our all and so we get to give every single song that we're releasing its own life and i think that they the songs deserve that so we're kind of just taking um a page out of the hip-hop playbook and just doing singles right now it will culminate to a full album for sure Eventually. we'll be able to get it all together with the artwork and all that fun stuff but right now we are really having fun giving these songs Room, I think a lot of bands sure. are doing what you're doing. Yeah. I see a lot of bands doing that, just releasing singles and doing that. Yeah, it's it's fun for us, too. Um, it, it's fun. We get to really dive into the release and really, um, you know, give it its own merch, give it its own everything, its own artwork, its own, like I said, breath. <laughs> right. So. Out of all the touring that you guys have done, what's your favorite place to tour at? What's favorite place? What place do you look at and be like, I don't want to go there. This is, that was a blast. Prague. <laughs> Prague is awesome. Um, gosh, That's Australia is really I've great. typically try to find something special about every single city right. that we go to. Even if it's just a great coffee shop where I can sit in for a little while in the morning and, and enjoy my morning or a, you know, a place with a great gym that we saw. There's a place in Buffalo that we go to that has like an awesome gym that I know is always going to be there. So there's something special about every place. Um, and I think that. I yeah. I mean, coming anywhere. here to Sage, we really love going, seeing the mechanical penis next door. So <laughs> that's right. I remember last time you went, it was, you were riding the thing. Oh, yeah, thing so I, was like, it's still there. I have no I idea. I guess we'll find out after the show. <laughs> Definitely. But, yeah. We definitely like you know, as Carla said, there's different there's different um pluses about everywhere we go. Oh, absolutely. As far as like um, has has have you guys ever had like a favorite tour that you've been on or whatever, or played at a, you know like the festival and? Like, I mean, going to Europe and playing the big metal festivals over there is like an experience. Like, no how's that other. compared to to there's U.S. festivals? Just ginormous it's, That's what I've it's heard. on a different level the festivals here are a blast and right, we right. love playing them um we're playing a lot on this run but in europe you'll have like fifty thousand people watching you and and that's on a smaller stage on the home like the bigger ones it's like two hundred thousand people you know you so, can't it's people as far as your eye can see and i remember watching because we we used to live in Los Angeles and we would go to the rainbow. We would see Lemmy at the rainbow all right. the time. And then I remember we went to Wacken, which is in Germany. Right. And we went there as uh, we were hosting a TV show uh, in 2011. And we watched Lemmy, the guy we always see at the end of the bar, playing in front of 280,000 people. And it was a really incredibly inspiring thing to see. And, you know, there are all, most of these festivals here in the States don't, um, their, their capacity is not that big. Um, I know that Lollapalooza was just huge, but um, it's, it's just a different experience. It really is. I think that well, every band I've talked to or ever interviewed, even the guy, people over in South America and stuff like that, are like, you got to go over to Bakken. Yeah. Like, it's just, 
it, does it hit you sometimes? Like being on stage, and you look out and it's like a sea of people. Well, you're like, I remember one time we were just going in a sprinter van, back to back shows, you know, these festivals, and we were so tired and grumpy, and we didn't see <laughs> what it looked like, you know, from stage view. We were just behind stage. We had to hurry. We get on stage. Right. So we walk out onto the stage, and this is one of those times when there's like a hundred thousand people there waiting for you, and we're like, "Oh my god!" It's there like were catwalks, and crazy. we were waiting for ZZ Top, and it was insane. We walk out, and you, as far as your eye can see, there's people with their fists in the air, and it's something you dream about as a kid. When you when you, when you want to do this, that's what you dream about. You dream about, you know, people with their fists in the air chanting your lyrics, and we had just released Monsters Ball. And we start the song, can't stop moving. We're in France. And it's like, just fists in the air. And they're yelling at us in English. And it was the other thing, too. It's like when you're in Europe and the people that are singing your lyrics back to you, when English isn't their first language, but they're still singing along every word, that's such a powerful thing. I would think it would be. I think it'd be just tremendous. I know I talked to a couple of big artists, like even corpse grinder and i asked him and he goes it took my breath away mm-hmm. like i, I see he'll literally take my breath away because i have to step back a minute yeah you know because i just can't all the sea of people and they're singing our lyrics and doing their thing and yeah. it's just like unreal um two last questions what what's your favorite album growing up what was one album that you went to that was like that was your album like, oh my favorite album growing up would 100 percent be tragic kingdom but no doubt really yep yeah. Oh. And it's not, it's not, you know, the metal album that, you know, got me, you know, it's not a metal album. It didn't get me into metal. It didn't do any of that kind of stuff. The thing about that album, what it did for me is I was, I was a young girl who, I grew up from Provo, Utah, where it, I didn't have, my parents didn't let me listen to rock or anything. And then I saw Gwen Stefani and I remember seeing the music I snuck in my bed, my basement in the middle of the night and I turned on MTV because I wasn't allowed to listen to watch MTV either. And I remember seeing the music video for Spiderwebs and Gwen Stefani just had this insane presence. And to me, I was like, that's where I want to be. Now, if you want to go like metal, of course, like Slipknot's self-titled album and that kind of stuff but i'd say the most influential for me as a performer would be no doubt tragic kingdom i'd say for me it was welcome uh, after for destruction uh right. first time i heard welcome to the jungle i was hooked on rock and roll before that i just listened to what my parents listened to and that was but the first band that i really loved okay. which changed my my life and made me want to play music so. and what was the very first concert you've ever seen <laughs> new kids in the block backstreet boys Right. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> the second was Megadeth, so there's that. There you go. Well, thank you for doing the interview. Um, I want to say I've seen Slayer 18 times. I've seen a lot of bands a lot of times, and I, you're third on the list. I don't know why or how, but for some reason, I'm a big fan of you guys, and oh, I've you. seen you from the very early days to now and see you progressed. Thank and you. Um, to me, you've done it right. You're one of those bands that have, it's not like you're part of the clique, but you didn't really have anybody pushing you or helping you. You know what I'm saying? Like you did it on your own. And I've watched throughout the years and I'm, I'm just a nobody. I'm just a dude, you know? Um, but I've seen you and I just, it is, but I've seen you and play in very shitty places, you know, but then I've seen you play with Megada and play different places. I've traveled quite a ways to, to see you guys play with different bands and whatever like that. Um, I'm not a super fan, but like I said before, I, I admire what you do and I respect what you do. You. Highly you. grateful. It and means I, a lot. That really does. You know, well. And it's like I've interviewed you um, before, both of you, and, and I've always been a fan, but um, I have more respect for you guys than anything. Like, I've seen a lot of bands. I've talked to a lot of people, and out of all the years, you two and your whole band um, is kind of an inspiration to a lot of people, you know? Thank and you. I think Everybody, you guys. We need to hear that sometimes. <laughs> well, through this pandemic, like I said, you guys have done like you're working out and you've got your art and painting and you know and you've got your podcast and all this other stuff yeah. both of you got what your stuff but you continually kept on going you haven't stopped and a lot of these guys have stopped you know i've seen a lot of bands disappear you know and through this whole bs shit that we went through uh i've lost a lot of people and and we've gone through a lot of crap but as far as the band um you know, my personal opinion, just me being me, just being a fan or whatever, like I am, it's just like you guys have progressively grown and Thank it you. is what it is. It's just you deserve way more than what you got. 
Well, you know, I'm I, just going to say that. I'm, saying. I'm not that. trying to get anything. I just don't yeah, give a shit. Yeah, I'm just saying. Thank you so much. You know, it's like we can sit here and think that all the live long day, but we appreciate the support. And honestly, like, it's not even just like the support. The, those words really do mean a lot to us. So and so it's like it. the pandemic was far from everybody. Yeah. I almost lost my business. If it wasn't for her, I would have been shit out of luck. You know, doing interviews. Nobody wanted to do a damn interview. Nobody wanted to do, do anything during the pandemic because no one just, they didn't know how to handle it. Yeah. yeah. But every day, you guys progressively, like, and I would see you on my newsfeed with other metal people and whatever like that. And I'm not lying. You were, the, you two were the first people that were just like, it seemed like you were doing something. Yeah. And I didn't understand why more bands didn't do that. More bands would just didn't do any of that. But anyway. I'm well, gonna I, get out of my <laughs> my, my, my opinion a little well, like I, that. Yeah, I'm glad that didn't go unnoticed. So thank you because we we definitely sat on the phone together, you know, hours upon hours trying to think of things to do to keep you know uh, keep ourselves sane, but also keep ourselves seen too. So we appreciate it. Just, it just is what it is, and we don't know what the future holds. Yeah. We have no idea. So hopefully this will be a little bit better, and hopefully we'll adapt as human beings to the. Yeah. We need music in our lives, and I'm I'm glad that you. This is our first concert since we've been to sporting events. We've been all sorts oh, of stuff. Yay! This is our first concert back, and I got an interview with uh, Nervosa coming up. So, oh, I love that. Um, you know, we'll go from there. But yeah, um, thank you very much. Well, thank you.